problems underneath the car. Now in the past, I would have had to lie on the ground and squeeze myself underneath it. Not anymore. This hydraulic car ramp lifts your car in here so I can have a proper look. Right. Ah, there's your problem. <laughs> you need a new exhaust. Come and meet my little boys. They're so adorable. I love the looks of their little faces. Okay. Okay, this is Mr. Ted. He's five and he's from the Enchanted Forest. <laughs> this is Snugglepuss. And um, he's from the land of Nod and he helps me sleep when I'm lonely. Don't you? Sure you do. <laughs> and this is um, Puddle. And he's called that because he fell in a puddle when he was two. Yes. <laughs> Come on, let's go meet yours then. All right. This is Sam from Lowestoft. <laughs> and he's on a blind date. suit on yet. I'll be out in a minute. Get a move on. All right, almost finished. Well, I'll do, won't it? What do you think? Yeah, it's fine. What? Does it look rubbish? Quite the opposite. <laughs> Sorry? Quite the opposite. You look amazing, mate. Are you OK? You look fantastic. <laughs> well, it's all right, I suppose. All right, it's more than all right. You look... I look what? You look like a prince. <laughs> well, that's not, we're going to be wearing the same thing. Am I? Yeah. We can look like a pair of princes. <laughs> we're going to be turning heads. Well, it's going to be like a fairy tale. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. Get off me. I do love the lake this time of year. Karen. You're not going to like what I've got to say to you. All those weekends away were nothing to do with work. I'm having an affair with Wendy. Thanks. <laughs> so how do you feel <laughs> Cheers. Come on, don't just bottle your feelings up. Can't you hear what I'm saying? I'm leaving you. I'm leaving the kids. <laughs> You're right. That was a big one. <laughs> now, if you could just shut your right eye for me and open it and again. Now to me. Stop it! Morning. Morning. He's been free for ages, you know. Sorry? He's been out of jail for over ten years. Who has? Nelson Mandela. So? Oh. Bloody kids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, this is for you then. Oh, great. We've been waiting for this. Anything interesting? Yeah, it's our campaign leaflets. Trying to get rid of that Margaret Thatcher. Say that when the other bloke knew all along. He's quiet. 
Where are we now? Is this a flashback bit? I don't even know what's going on anymore. Are we? Shh. Ronnie! Please, can we watch the news in peace? <laughs> what do you want? Blood? <laughs> <laughs> Any blind dates? No. <laughs> I'm glad you responded to my advert, though. Well, it certainly stood out from the others. <laughs> Thirty-four-year-old lazy bugger requires a woman for friendship and possibly more, like ironing and stuff. <laughs> Must be reasonably attractive. Nothing special. I just don't want people sniggering when we're out in the street. <laughs> That's your cake. We haven't had our main courses yet. As a starter. No, no, thanks. I'm fine, really. Go on. No, really, I'm fine. I'm My okay. treat. No, really. Of course you're not fat. <laughs> Can I take your order? Madam. Uh, hi. Hi. <clears throat> yes, uh, for the starter, I'll have the carrot and tarragon soup, please. OK. <laughs> Sir. Cake. <laughs> As a starter. Just write it down. <laughs> Main course. The seared lamb with warm bolotti bean tabouleh. Tell me, does that contain bulgur wheat? Yes, it does, actually, yes. Well, I'll have that, then. OK. A fine choice. Mm. Tell you what, why don't I have that with the brinage sauce? Yum, yum. <laughs> so, yes, tell me. The tagliatelle with baby clam chafilia and mange too. Does that contain any chocolate? <laughs> chocolate, no. Then I'll take the cake. And I'll tell you what, I'll have that. The custard sauce. <laughs> yum, yum. Dessert. Cake. Madam? Do you have any tartar citron with creme fraiche? Yes. I'll have that. <laughs> Sir? Have you got any mocha roulade with raspberry coulis? No. Good. I'll have a cake. <laughs> if you're having cake as starter and main course, I think the cake will then be finished. We do have sorbet. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, a kind of frozen fruit. A sort of free glacé. <laughs> Serve Monsieur Lassiette pour moi. Uh, après être le restaurant excellent. Piss off. <laughs> Look, why don't you have it? You'll like it. Really, it's nice. All right, sorbet. Oi! With custard. <laughs> Fancy coming back to my mum's later? Have a cake. Do you live with your mum? Oh, yeah. In fact, it was her idea to put that advert out. Do you know what she says? She goes, Lee, you need a woman in your life. <laughs> I can knit your jumpers. I can darn your socks. <laughs> And I can make your soup on a cold winter's day. <laughs> but you can't stick your finger up my bum. This is going to take much longer. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I haven't served a drink for the last hour. Oh, at last. <laughs> Hi, could Hi. I have... Excuse me. I think you'll find I was next. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you were. Oh, OK. Please, can I have... Actually, I've been here for ages. I'll be with you in a minute. Um, <laughs> a bottle of lager, please. <laughs> Thank you. Right, now what can you get me? Whiskey chaser. How old are you? I'll get your whiskey chaser. Shouting's not going to make me go quicker. <laughs> You're too young. Yes, I'll have a packet of peanuts, please. There you are. Have you got anything smaller? <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing round here? You're not allowed this side of the bar. <laughs> uh, excuse me, can I get you another lager, please? 
How many customers have you served today? Eight. I think you've had enough, haven't you? <laughs> that goes for all of you. Haven't I got a home to go to? Don't worry, this is the best thing for a loose tooth. My dad used to do this to me all the time. OK, are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> okay. I don't think that one's ready to come out yet. Howdy, Tim. Mandy says meet her at Epsom Clock Tower by sundown. Y'all make sure you're there. What was that? It was a text message. <laughs> so how are you enjoying your first day at work? I'm not enjoying it in the slightest. I have to say, the way the patients are treated in this hospital is an outrage. What do you mean? Dr Ancona has just told me that a patient came in here complaining that they felt like a pair of curtains and the doctor just went, ooh, pull yourself together. The way people are treated in this country with mental illnesses is just disgraceful. I think she was telling you a joke. It's not true. A joke? Yes. All right, maybe that was a joke, but she also told me that someone came in saying they only had three minutes to live and the doctor just went, Oh, I'll boil you an egg. And surely the situation there should be that she should contact accident and no, emergency. No, that's a joke as well. Is it? Yes. What an idiot. They're very old jokes. I've never heard them. Uh. I feel like such a prat. <laughs> well, don't worry about it too much. So it's quite funny, really, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Here's a good one for you. Hey, Mr Jenkins, you've got blockage of the arteries and you're going to have to have both your legs amputated. That's not a joke. You packed this case yourself, sir? Yes. Are you absolutely certain about that? Absolutely certain. There's no way someone could have slipped something in there? No way at all. You haven't left it unattended for any length of time? No, it's been by my side from the moment I packed it to the moment you brought me in here. Nobody has touched this case except me. I decided what to put in it. Everything in it belongs to me. You're sure? Totally sure. May I have a look inside it, please, I'd sir? rather you didn't. Why not? It's full of drugs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the eagle has landed. Neil? This is Houston. You are now linked up live to the nation. Okay, thanks, Houston. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! No! No! What is it, Neil? Nothing! Just my little joke. <laughs> Get on with it, Neil. Okay, on this historic occasion, I would just like to say this may be one small step for man. You still with us, Neil? Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot the next bit. This may be one small step for man. Look, Mom, I'm on the moon. No, that's not it. This may be one small step for man. Way! <laughs> Jeez, what is it? Leo, can you please hurry? Shut up, I noticed. I've been to Button Moon and I followed Mr. Spoon. <laughs> Neil. Just say anything. Okay, I am Neil Armstrong, and as I look down and see you all so many miles away and yet so close to my heart, I say to you, Earthlings. Earthlings? Who the hell do you think you are? Who the hell I am? I'm Neil Armstrong, king of the freaking moon. Who the hell are you? No, I'm Neil Armstrong, the moon emperor, and I own this place. It's all mine. So screw you. Neil, just get on the moon and stick the flag in the ground. Okay, this may be one small step for man, but it's one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Can you hold, please? Thank you.
Please hold, your call is important to us. <laughs> OK, right then, whose was what? Tim? Uh, mine's a pint of Dolls. Pint of Dolls, Jim? I'm on the lobster. Ronnie? Uh, mine's the hand. And Karen? Pint of Dice. And a pint of Clocks for me. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Here's to the Surreal Ale Society. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing to remember is that children deserve just as much respect as adults. I think it's when we start treating them as inferior, that's when we're on the wrong track. And that's when all the problems begin. Give. 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 You know, I think some parents are so wrapped up in their own world they can't see the mistakes they're making. Fetch! <laughs> sad, children deserve a lot better than that. Will you marry me? What? Will you marry me? What? Will you marry me? Oh, will I marry you? I couldn't hear you, no. <laughs> I'll bring on my travelling chess set. Yeah, of course it is. Come on! <laughs> now, some people prefer to replace the original stone with the birthstone. Make it a bit more personal. Would you prefer that? Oh, that's a good idea. OK, we'll do that. All right, what's your birthstone? Come on, you should know this. I told you last week. Let me help. When's her birthday? <laughs> Well, it doesn't have to be the exact date, just the month. <laughs> Maybe you should go for a necklace instead. That's a good idea. What do you say? Yeah, right, whatever. Well, we could get that engraved, mate. That's more personal. OK. What's the name? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. What's the matter, Tim? Oh, hi. Uh, I just can't decide whether to marry Debbie or not. Mm. I can't seem to make a decision one way or the other. Well, what are you doing to help you come to a decision? Well, the only thing I have done is I've made a list of pros and I've made a list of cons. So there are 20 pros and 20 cons, and I'm trying to weigh them up. Would you want me to go through the list with you? Would you? Yeah, sure. So, you give me the pros, you have the cons, I'll read a pro, you read a con, and we'll alternate like that. Anything strikes me, I'll let you know. OK. I'll start. She loves me and I love her. She murdered her fourth husband. <laughs> there you go. Daddy, will you tell me a bedtime story? Of course I will. Once upon a time, there was a man called Freddy Krueger. Oh. <laughs> right, we're the most notorious banknote-forging gang in the country. If we want to stay that way, we've got to cut our costs. Accounts, how much is it costing us to forge one ten-pound note? £12.37. <laughs> Which means we're making... A loss of £2.37 on every note. Exactly. So I'm open to any suggestions to help us save money. Fingers. If we paint on the number 20 instead of 10, then on every note we should make a profit of £7.63. <laughs> Brilliant. That's why I hired him. I'll have to run it past our art department. Brushes. Yes, boss. Can you change a 10 to a 20? I don't think I've got any money on me. <laughs> you have to remember that a £20 note is bigger than a £10 note. Wait a minute. Stationery's got a point, but I don't think it matters. I didn't know there were different sizes. I don't think Joe Public will either. And by the way, when you're getting paper, can you make sure it's plain? That graph paper isn't working. <laughs> plain paper is more expensive than graph paper. OK, split the difference. Stationery, keep getting graph paper. Brushes, stock up on Tipex. Yeah, well, Tipex is hardly cheap. <laughs> ah, back to square one. If only there was some way of at least breaking even. Ah, why don't we circulate genuine £10 notes? Then, that way, we'll spend just £10 on every note. We'd be lost without you. <laughs> it's radical, it's cheeky, it's in. But remember, everyone, not a word of the cops. And now the shipping news. German Bight, east 5 or 6, veering southwesterly. Cromarty north, easterly, becoming variable 3 or 4. Does that affect us, Captain? I can never understand these things. Fisher, <laughs> south to southwesterly, moderate to squally 7 or 8. Viking North, easterly, two to three. Does that affect us, Captain? Didn't understand a word she said. Two blokes with yellow overalls in middle of sea, clueless, will probably drown. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Buffy! 
Ray, the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Hello, sir. This won't take very long. Do you mind if I talk to you about Jesus? No, thank you. Would you like to buy a tea towel, J cloth, ironing board cover? No, thank you. Pizza! What? I brought you pizza. Sorry, no garlic bread. I didn't order a pizza. Could I read your gas meter? You're from the gas board? No, but I could just read it anyway, you know, just for a laugh. No, thank you. Can I borrow a cup of sugar then? I've just moved in next door. Have you? No. I'm a plain close police officer. I'm afraid your wife's been run over by a steamroller. Oh my God, has she? I'm so sorry, yes. Oh my God. I do find at times like this it helps to talk about Jesus. You better come in. <laughs> You're looking very lovely in the half-light. Really? Really. Your skin is cool and clear and your eyes are shining, growing lovelier and lovelier every second as I look at you. There isn't a particle of you that I don't know and want. I'm so glad you feel that way, my darling, because I feel the same way. My heart flutters like a small bird every time you're near. How small? Like a chaffinch. Only quite small. A wren, then. Very small. No, a moth. Tiny. I want you. Deep down in my deepest heart, I want you back. I'm feeling quite emotional, are you? Very. Very? Very. How very? Very, very. Me too. <laughs> I find the moonlight in its mysterious ways drawing me closer and closer to you. Yes. It's almost beastly. Yes. Shall we embark upon a vacation? Where to? I believe the world is very lovely this time of year. <laughs> I prefer Norfolk. Flat Norfolk? Very flat. How flat? Flatter than flat. How flat's that? Like a pancake. Even flatter? A very pancake. Too flat. <laughs> or Belgravia. We could take rooms. How awfully improper of you. Forgive me, I... You really are quite a pounder. Really? Really. Really? Very. Very? Very. Quite. I love you, Jane. It's Daphne. <laughs> Sorry, wrong balcony. <laughs> Lee, Lee, what are you doing? I'm trying to get conkers. What are you talking about? They're all over the floor here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Hello there. Sorry to trouble you. I think my car's broken down. I was... I know it's late and everything, but could I use your phone? Um... Yeah, come on in, yeah. Uh, it's just there. I really will be very quick. That's all right. Hello? Jim? Yes? 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 What are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Look at him showing off. Who's he trying to impress? I know. He's been there for ages. Really? How long? About 15 minutes. His head stuck in the filter. <gasps> Hi, I'd like my watch fixed, please. I'm afraid we're closed. I thought you were open till 5.30. We are. <laughs> <laughs>